All right, so in this video we're checking out the Secure SQ-001 portable soldering iron. So this uh, soldering iron is sold in a number of different kits. So you can get the soldering iron by itself with one tip, or you can get a different combination. So I um, asked them to send me this combination here. It's a kit that comes with the case and four um, tips. So uh, it's going to be a little more convenient for different types of soldering jobs, and it's uh, I think it's like fifty dollars worth just the the basic kit, and this one here is eighty six dollars I believe, so it's like roughly thirty thirty five dollars more, thirty six dollars more for this, but you get the extra tips in case you need those for later. Now something like this is going to be more useful in my opinion out in the field. I do know that people have been using this to, to do full builds, but Keep in mind that after about 30 to 40 minutes, the soldering iron will get very warm So, uh, if you're using it constantly. So just something to keep in mind. It's not really intended for continuous use, like hour after hour. So it's really meant for occasional use, repairs, that kind of thing, again, like out in the field. So it will come with a XT60 power adapter so you can um, power it via like a 4-cell LiPo. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got inside. And there's actually a few things in here that um, actually don't come in the kit. They're actually considered free gifts. And if you buy it at the uh, Secure uh, website, which is going to be linked down in the description, they'll come with these gifts. I think it's like an $8 or $10 value, something like that. I think you get this uh, flux paste, I believe. Yeah, this is not included in the normal kit. This is a add-on if you get it at their store. And then you get this uh, lead-free solder wire. You know, the stuff that I use is from MG Chemicals. It's this uh, combination of 63%, I think it's tin, and 30%, 37% lead. And this one here looks like it's 30% tin and 70% lead. Or some combination of that plus copper. Not not really sure about this one. Um, I tend to like this one here because it, it works really well and gives you... Uh, it's easy to work with, and um, it, it just uh, I get uh, it gets the job done for me. Uh, I know that I think a lot of people also use 6040 um, solder, which is a uh, pretty common. But this one is actually uh, this is one I like the, the mixture I like the most. And you get this solder wick here. This is for basically absorbing solder uh, if you want to do like a desoldering type of job. So this is included as well. That's free. So that's all the stuff that's uh, not included in the kit. This is what you get in the kit if you, say, bought it from a different store, uh, like Race Day Quads or Amazon, somewhere else where they sell these. Um, uh, there are various other places you can get these as well. Okay, so I went ahead and just pulled everything out of the case here so you can see everything that you're going to get. So you do get a manual here. This is the full manual. And I'm not going to actually go over everything in here because it's, uh, you can probably read that on your own later. And it looks like you get something here kind of looks like a quick start guy. It has some safety instructions or just some general documentation. There's, I guess, a firmware upgrade that you could do on the soldering iron. Uh, I guess there's a USB port on the soldering iron and then has a little uh, parts names for all the parts on the soldering iron here. And if you want to look that over, just go ahead and pause the video. Uh, but yeah, you can see that the voltage range is 12 to 24 volts. So if you're thinking you know, a 6S might work, uh, 6S is, you know, if you have a full 6S light, but it's like 25.2 volts. It's probably going to be too much for this. You don't want to burn it out. So I would say limit it to up to 5S and 12 volts will be like 3S or so 3 to 5S on the power. If you're going to be using the um, XD60 cable to power up the uh, soldering iron. Of course, they do have power adapters or power supplies available if you're going to be using it at home and you don't want to use a battery, then you, you can get one of those. Uh, they didn't include it in this kit, but they do have kits with this iron that include the power supply as well. I think it's an extra $20 for that. All right, so you get some stickers as well and some tools, like a hex tool and some screws. I think that's for securing the soldering iron tips. And the plug is in the back here for the power. This plugs in over here. And then you have your uh, micro USB port for doing the firmware updates. And this looks pretty similar to like the TS-100, if you guys remember that's a very popular soldering iron. But this one um, is it's only like, if you just get the soldering iron by itself, it's like 50. I think the TS-100 was, I think, closer to 80 just for the soldering iron by itself. So these are the four tips that are included in this particular kit. 
So obviously these are going to be used for different types of jobs, probably for smaller or bigger wires. It kind of depends on which one you want to use. I'll uh, list these up here on the screen if you're wondering which ones these are. If you get the single one, if you buy from the secure store, you can actually choose the tip that you want to get. If you um, uh, just want to get the single tip version, you can actually choose the tip that you want. I think there's about nine or ten different options available to you. So if you say want this for fine work, then you can get the fine tip here instead of the, uh, the thicker tip or the, the chisel tip, for example, for bigger wires. It really depends on what you're going to be using it for. But uh, if you are only going to go for the single tip, then yeah, probably not the fine tip, but maybe this just, you know, this one here, probably general purpose one, would be useful for that. But yeah, this is what it looks like here. Of course, replacement tips are available. You can buy them individually as well. Uh, but let's see, we just go ahead and just stick that in here. And then we just tighten up that screw. Yeah, so this is just an M2 screw. You just tighten that down, and that'll hold the tip in place. And the uh, power cord is about three feet long if you're wondering how long it is. We'll go ahead and let's power this up. So I'm going to use the included stand here. You want to do that, so otherwise it'll get really hot and burn whatever it's touching. So go ahead and put that in the stand. We'll go turn this on. So I'm just going to use a uh, 4S LiPo here with an XD60 to power this up. And we get a little startup session, uh, screen here. And it's saying press that button to turn it on. So it's the A button. And showing you the temperature, um, and I believe it defaults to 300 Celsius. That's the default temperature, and you can adjust the temperature, of course. So that roughly took about 20 seconds to, to get up to temperature. And then if you um, want to increase it, you can go up to up to maximum 400, basically hit the B button. And yeah, so you press and hold the B button, and that'll bring the temperature up here. And then you can use the B button to increase it. So I'm going to raise it up to... Uh, 350 Celsius. And it's going to take a little bit of time for it to come up to temperature. So you have one from 300 to 350. And let's see how how this tip is. And it's uh, pretty hot already. Alright, so we're just going to do a real quick demo here. We're just going to tin up this uh, some of these pads here that aren't tinned up on this flight controller. So there's a, just a quick look at what that looks like. I am using the solder that I like to use, so um, I'm kind of used to the way it melts and also solidifies. Uh, you're going to have to adjust your timing on, on how much you use the uh, tip on the pad here um, based on what kind of solder you use. So that's going to kind of vary depending on which uh, kind of solder you use. But it looks pretty decent, and uh, I'd say it works fairly similarly to my uh, favorite soldering iron. That's the Hakko uh, soldering station that I've been using for years. And let's see how uh, uh, this works with a couple of wires. Alright, so I just did a couple of wires right here and yeah, works just fine. Uh, really, no complaints. Just uh, it is a the, the iron itself is very light, so it's a, the way you're handling it is a little bit different. But other than that, really no complaints. Uh, obviously, I'm working with very tiny wires here, so if you're working with some thicker gauge wires, like say like an XT60 connection, uh, those are going to be like say like 12 or 16 gauge wire. You're going to probably want to hold that iron down on the wire longer, and or you want to raise up that temperature from 350 to 400. As long as you do that and hold it down and make sure that enough heat's getting into the wire, uh, the soldering job should work just fine. Yeah, so overall I think this works pretty well. Um, if you're looking for a soldering iron out for in the field for doing repairs, that kind of thing, it's a pretty good value and obviously you can do firmware updates. It's very programmable and adjustable and stuff like that. So it's going to be pretty similar to the very popular TS-100 that's out there um, and it seems to work just fine. Anyway, I'll have a link down in the description if you guys want to check this out, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.